Well, here we are. At home, in our living rooms. With our, our families. families. With those we love. Today, wherever you are located. Know that you are not alone. We're still connected. Today we gather as one body. Because the church is not a building. It never has been. We gather today as one church. To lift up one name. The name of Jesus. So wherever you are. Today is the day the Lord has made. Today is the day to give him thanks. So let's unite and worship. For he is worthy of it, today and every day. We are St Matthew's and St Oswald's. And Overslade Church. Welcome. Hello everyone. A lot of you said you enjoyed that little Vox Pop last week, so we thought we'd share it to you one more time. We've got a different plan for next week, so you'll have to tune in and see if that comes off. My name's Alan Hume, I'm the vicar here, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this service. We're still celebrating Easter, it's still resurrection season. Now, as you will know, after our services when we meet normally, we offer prayer ministry. And today we're reintroducing that. Our prayer ministry team will be available to pray for people between 11.30 and midday on Sunday mornings. Now, if you'd like to access that prayer ministry, the way to do it is to email David Thomas, his email address is there on the screen for you, email him before 11.15 on Sunday morning, giving your name, your phone number, and if you particularly want a, a man or a woman to phone you back, if that matters for the issue that you're wanting to pray about. Uh, if you do that, then someone from the prayer ministry team will call you back between 11.30 and midday on a Sunday. If you're watching this on catch up later in the week, you'll have to wait till next Sunday morning. This is specifically from 11.30 till midday on Sunday. So we hope that is helpful for you. Now turning to today, St. John wrote, There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear. Shall we pray? Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you into the various places where we meet today. As we worship, we want to meet with Jesus. And so we pray the presence of your Holy Spirit in the rooms where we are. Amen. And so with confidence we can say, that the Lord is here and his spirit is with us. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let's worship now in song.
Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of God is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sins and turn to Christ in penitence and faith, praying together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Bible says, As far as the east is from the west, so far shall your sin be from you. So receive the forgiveness of God and choose to walk with him in newness of life. Amen. Now today, James and Grandad are joining us again. James is feeling very afraid of COVID-19 and he's having a Zoom chat with his granddad. Hello, James. Or should I say, hello, Blanket. What are you doing, James? I'm hiding, Grandad. I can see that, James, but who are you hiding from? Have you upset your dad again? No, Grandad. I'm hiding from COVID-19. Right. It's going to get me, Grandad. I know that it is, and I'm so afraid. I don't want to get really ill and go to hospital and be put on a venti thing and then die and oh how Grandad, I'm so scared. Oh, poor James. You really are frightened, aren't you? Yes, I am, Grandad. But hiding under a blanket isn't going to help you, James. Won't it protect me, Grandad? No, it won't, James. So why don't you take off the blanket and we can have a little chat together? If you're sure that my blanket isn't protecting me from nasty COVID, Grandad. I'm sure. Oh, hello, Grandad. I can see your face now. It's good to see your face too, James. Now then. Why don't you tell me where all these anxious thoughts have come from? I saw it all on the television last night, Grandad. The news reporter said that lots of people are going to hospital and some people are dying. And the more that he talked, the more frightened I got. I understand that totally, James. COVID-19 is a serious situation. but. We don't need to get in a total panic about it. Many people have been ill, but they've also got better again. Have they, Grandad? Yes, they have, James. Oh! And if we are sensible about washing our hands and keeping our distance from people, then we will probably be okay too. Do you really think so, Grandad? Yes, I do, James. But even if we did get ill, we can have hope as followers of Jesus. How, Grandad? Jesus promised his followers, and he promises us that he is always with us. He will never leave us, whatever is going on in our lives, even if we caught COVID-19. That makes me feel a lot better, Grandad. I want Jesus to be close to me, especially if I got ill. Well, he is, James. It is like he is holding your hand. Whenever I feel afraid walking in the dark to my violin lesson, Dad holds my hand. When he does that, I feel safe again. Although you can't see Jesus, he is walking right beside you. So, just imagine 
that he is holding your hand like your dad does. I'll try and do that, Grandad. But I wish that I could see Jesus because when I'm really scared, it seems like he is a long way away and my hand doesn't stretch that far. I know, James. Jesus seems like he is far away. Although he isn't really, it feels that way because your fear is very big and right in front of you. My fear of COVID-19 is ginormous, Grandad. So, why don't you tell Jesus about it? Jesus wants you to be honest with him about the things that make you scared. Really, Grandad? Really, James. When you have told Jesus how scared you are, Jesus wants to wrap you around his peace. Like a warm blanket? Yes, like a warm blanket around your heart. Can I pray now, Grandad? Of course you can, James. Jesus is right here with us. Jesus, I'm scared of COVID-19. Grandad has told me that you will never leave me. And I believe Grandad because he always tells me the truth. Help me to know inside of me that you, my great big God, are with me. Help me to put my hand in yours now. And Jesus, please would you wrap my heart up in the warm blanket of your peace. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Grandad. I do feel a bit better now. Hey, I'd better go. I think that my toasted marshmallows should be ready. They've been sitting on the electric rings of the cooker for the last half an hour. Oh, James. Let's remember how great, how big God is as we sing together. Our God is a great big God.
Now we're going to see what happened when Jesus met Peter one-on-one, -on -one, a little while after Peter had given in to fear and denied even knowing Jesus. After this, Jesus appeared once more to his disciples at Lake Tiberias. This is how it happened. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel, the one from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples of Jesus were all together. Simon Peter said to the others, I'm going fishing. We will come with you, they told him. So they went out in a boat, but all that night they did not catch a thing. As the sun was rising, Jesus stood at the water's edge, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Young men, haven't you caught anything? Not a thing! Throw your net out on the right side of the boat, and you will catch some. So they threw the net out and could not pull it back in because they had caught so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the When Peter heard that it was the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken his clothes off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples came to shore in the boat, pulling the net full of fish. They were not very far from land, about a hundred yards away. When they stepped to shore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and some bread. Bring some of the fish you've just caught. Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net ashore full of big fish, 153 in all. Even though there were so many, still the net did not tear. Come and eat. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. So Jesus went over, took the bread and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This then was the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from death. After they had eaten, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Take care of my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. A third time, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter became sad because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? And so he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. I am telling you the truth. When you were young, you used to get ready and go anywhere you wanted to. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will tie you up and take you where you don't want to go. 
In saying this, Jesus was indicating the way in which Peter would die and bring glory to God. Then Jesus said to him, Follow me. Peter turned round and saw behind him that other disciple whom Jesus loved, the one who had leaned close to Jesus at the meal and had asked, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about this man? If I want him to live until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. So a report spread among the followers of Jesus that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say he would not die. He said, if I want him to live until I come, what is that to you? He is the disciple who spoke of these things, the one who also wrote them down. And we know that what he said is true. Now there are many other things that Jesus did. If they were all written down one by one, I suppose that the whole world could not hold the books that would be written. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word and we ask that you would speak to us through it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Fear. We have all felt it. We all know what it is like to be in its grip. On the night of Jesus' arrest, Peter, one of Jesus' closest disciples, was afraid. His Lord and Master had been arrested amidst a scuffle in the garden and was now on trial. And as Peter sat in the high priest's courtyard, the cold fingers of fear crept around his heart and his spirit as he tried to warm himself by the fire. Here was a man who had declared to Jesus that he would never disown him whatever happened and that he was even willing to die for Jesus because he loved Jesus so much. And then the challenge came. You were one of them. You knew this man, Jesus. And before Peter knew it, he acted out of fear and denied knowing Jesus three times. Giving in to fear on that night in the courtyard resulted in Peter lying and denying knowing Jesus. The condemnation then crashed into his spirit as soon as Peter heard the cockerel crow. And the Bible tells us that he went out and wept. You can imagine the guilt and shame that Peter lived with for the next few days. How could he ever put right what he had done? He must have been in total torment. And then there was that glorious evening when Jesus appeared to the disciples in the locked room, revealing to them that he was alive again. I wonder how Peter felt then. I wonder if the joy of seeing the risen Jesus was mixed with the terrible guilt that he felt. Maybe he hung back while the other disciples drew close to Jesus on that night. Maybe Jesus noticed that and so later on took the initiative to seek out Peter by the Sea of Galilee, Peter's home territory. It all began with Peter deciding to go and fish. John doesn't tell us why Peter decided to do this. There may have been a number of reasons. Peter's family may have needed Peter to provide for them again. Or I wonder if Peter thought that he should go back to what he knew, which was fishing, because he'd made such a mess of being a disciple. Whatever the reason, Peter and a few of the other disciples spent all night fishing and caught nothing. In the early morning, they saw a figure on the beach 
who told them to fish on the right side of the boat and suddenly their nets were full. And the disciple John said to Peter, It is the Lord. Immediately Peter put his outer garment on, jumped into the water and made his way to shore. Peter was compelled to see Jesus. But what did he find when he arrived on the shore? Jesus cooking fish on a charcoal fire. I wonder if the smell of that charcoal fire took Peter back to the evening in the courtyard, standing around another fire, triggering the memory of his denials. And so he probably struggled to look Jesus in the eye as they ate together. But then Jesus took Peter away from the other disciples to have a private chat with him. Unlike the film clip that we've just seen, verse 20 of John chapter 21 tells us that John was following them at a distance, suggesting that Jesus and Peter were walking together along the beach. I wonder what Peter expected Jesus to say to him. Was he waiting for Jesus to say, why did you deny knowing me? You didn't just do it once, you did it three times. Why did you abandon me in my time of greatest need? You said that you would even die for me, but look at you, you fell at the first hurdle. But whatever Peter was expecting Jesus to say, Jesus simply asked Peter, do you love me? Jesus didn't condemn Peter for giving in to his fear and lying and denying knowing him. Jesus simply gave Peter an opportunity to start again. What love. And when Peter said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you, Jesus gave Peter a way of showing that love by sharing in Jesus' shepherding ministry. Feed my lambs, says Jesus. I'm willing to trust you again, is what in effect Jesus is saying here. They then walked on a little further and Jesus turned to Peter and asked him the same question again. Do you love me? Now this second question must have felt more uncomfortable for Peter, for Jesus was probing deeper into Peter's heart. And again Peter answered, yes Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Jesus is enlarging the scope of the ministry that he is entrusting to Peter, to not simply teaching his people, but to looking after them as well. And then I can imagine Jesus stopping and facing Peter, looking him directly in the eye as he said, Do you love me? At this point, Peter's pain surfaced. John tells us that he was hurt because Jesus asked him the same question again. But what Jesus was doing with Peter was extraordinarily kind and loving. Jesus was bringing into his light what Peter had got so terribly wrong in the courtyard a few days earlier and giving Peter a chance to put things right. Peter then said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Peter now knew that Jesus was well aware of what had happened, how he'd given in to fear and denied knowing him three times. It was all out in the open now. And Peter once again had the opportunity to declare his love for Jesus. And Jesus reaffirmed his commission to Peter by saying, feed my sheep. And then Jesus went on to tell Peter that one day he would actually die for him. Peter wouldn't run away 
or deny knowing Jesus, he would actually be martyred for his faith. And the conversation ended with Jesus' invitation to Peter to follow me. This was Jesus inviting Peter to, as it were, get back on the horse again, having fallen off. And Peter went on to become a fearless and highly fruitful leader of the church. So although giving in to fear in the courtyard resulted in Peter lying and denying knowing Jesus, meeting the perfect love of Jesus led Peter out of fear and into fruitfulness. Now, as I said earlier, fear is something that we all experience, especially at the moment. Many of us are afraid of getting COVID-19 and all the various things that could happen to us or to our loved ones. And it's okay to feel afraid. And in my version of the Bible are the words, do not be afraid, 70 times. And these words are spoken to different people at different times. And these words are not condemning words when spoken, but they're meant to be reassuring words. The reassurance generally given to people in the Bible is that they don't need to be afraid because the Lord is with them. They're not alone in what they're facing because God, the Mighty One, is with them. And the same is true for us, whatever we're facing. The Lord, the one who loves us and who has all power and all authority, is with us. There is nothing that he cannot do. There is nothing that he cannot provide. The problem with fear comes when we allow fear to control our lives and we start acting out of fear like Peter did in the courtyard. I've witnessed, as I'm sure you have, really bad decisions made by myself and by others when fear was controlling the situation. I've seen people completely paralysed by fear and unable to act responsibly. You see, when we allow fear to control us, we can no longer obey what the Lord asks of us and we can end up sinning in all sorts of ways. So the key thing when we're feeling afraid is to turn to Jesus. Recognise that he, the one who loves us, is walking right beside us. We are not alone. He's also able to provide for us in every situation we find ourselves in. Yes, the things that we fear can be very big. But Jesus is much bigger. And when we don't know what to pray... Taking a psalm like Psalm 23 and using the words to pray to the Lord can be really helpful. And as we draw close to the Lord, we discover that his perfect love for us really does cast out our fear. Although we can't see ahead or how a situation will resolve, and although many things don't seem to make sense, in his presence, we can dare to trust him, for we are not alone. So let's pray. Lord, thank you that you, the Lord of heaven and earth, have promised to never leave us whatever is going on in our lives. Thank you for the truth that we are not alone. Help us to hold on to this truth in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to listen now to a song called I Am Not Alone. Allow the Lord to minister to you as you listen to it.
觉。I'm going to lead you now through a simple meditation upon Psalm 23, leading you through a phrase at a time. So let's pray. The Lord is my shepherd. You, Lord Jesus, are our shepherd. You, the Lord of heaven and earth, are our shepherd. You love us even though we mess up. Even though we hide from you, you even laid down your life so that we can know you. As we pause, hear Jesus, your shepherd, speaking your name to you and sense his delight in you. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Lord Jesus, thank you that you know all that we need. You're the one who's provided for our deepest need to have our relationship with our Heavenly Father restored. You are the one who generously gives us all things. Is there anything you feel you lack at the moment? Bring that need to Jesus as we pause.
He makes me lie down in green pastures. Lord Jesus, you make us rest. You say to us, rest in me. It's not your efforts that will bring blessing into your life, but it is my love for you and my grace. Can you rest in his love as we pause? He leads me beside quiet waters. Thank you, Jesus, that you, the Prince of Peace, leads us beside the quiet waters. As we rest in your presence, help us now to receive your peace deep into our spirits. Is anything troubling you at the moment and disturbing your peace? Invite the Lord to bring his peace into that concern as we pause. He refreshes my soul. Thank you, Jesus, that you refresh us from the troubles, the pain and the dirt that we encounter on our day-to-day -day walk. Receive his refreshing as we pause. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Jesus, you, the light of the world, are willing to lead us step by step on the path you've chosen for us. As we pause, let's ask the Lord to help us to keep following him faithfully. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Thank you, Jesus, that you walk with us in the darkest times of our lives. You never abandon us. We are not alone. So as we pause, allow the Lord to reassure you of his presence with you. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. We praise you, Jesus, that you are more able to bless us than our enemies are to curse us. So as we pause, thank the Lord for his kindnesses to you. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, Jesus, for the hope you give us, dwelling in your glorious presence forever, in that beautiful place where tears, death and pain are but a distant memory. So as we pause, ask yourself, am I living in the light of eternity? So together, let's join in with the prayer that Jesus, our Good Shepherd, taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Financial giving is still part of our worship, even when we meet this way. Now, most of that giving will have gone directly to the bank through standing orders. But for those of you who usually use the collection plate, there's a text number on the screen at the moment that you can use if you wish. So let's pray together over the resources that God has enabled us to give into his service this week. Praying together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power 
the glory, the splendor and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. So let's worship again as we sing our final song. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near And I will fear no For my God is with me And if my God is with me Whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? 
and we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light upon our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all people in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord make his face turn toward you and grant you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon you now and always. Amen. And so go in that peace, the peace of Christ, to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Last week we launched a project we called Water Kit and we asked you to imagine facing this pandemic without the ability to simply wash your hands. £30 given to Christian Aid provides a family in the developing world with both safe water and a hygiene kit. Now you can give £10 by simply texting Water Kit to 785, the number's there on the screen, or you can send a cheque made out to M2O PCC to die, our finance administrator, and all the details of address and things are on the website or in the email we sent out last Thursday. Now the challenge is simply to see how many families we can help. I'd like to think that 50 families is a relatively easy target, that would just be £1,500, but I don't want to set a limit upon our willingness to help. We've only just begun, and up to this Thursday, there's £584 being given. So that's 19 families already. So thank you very much for your generosity. Um, this appeal will actually replace the normal Christian Aid street collections for this year. So this is um, the, the big collection for Christian Aid. So next time you wash your hands, can I encourage you to think, how much could I give so someone else could do this? And the other bit of news to share with you is as we start to develop our new normal in this lockdown, on top of the Wednesday Zoom boiler room prayer meeting, we're going to have a short 15 to 20 minutes daily Zoom prayer room at nine o'clock on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And the format will be very simple. We'll read a Psalm and we'll pray, including using the Unite 714 material. So if you would like a link to join in, please could you email me at janehume at m2o.org.uk and I'll send you a link that will work every day. Join in when you can. So the rest of the news is on the weekly emailings. If you're not getting those, do go to the news page on the website and sign up. So God bless and we will see you next week. Goodbye.